So we have A plus B plus C equals 4. A minus B plus 2C equals negative 3. And negative 2A equals negative 4. Um, so now that we have these, we can solve, um, we can use them together to solve for A, B, and C. Um, we want to do this in the simplest way possible, so the first thing we can see immediately is that um, we can solve for A. We divide both sides of this third equation by negative 2, and we get A equals 2. So we can go ahead and plug 2 back in um, for A to these first two equations to make them simpler. So let's go ahead and plug 2 back in for A um, to these two. So we're going to end up with 2 here. And then um, let's go ahead and down here, actually up here, we'll say A equals 2. We're going to have to solve for B as well and C. So we have to still find those. So um, let's go ahead and simplify these equations. So the first one, um, this one here, is going to become B plus C equals 2. I subtracted 2 from both sides. And the second one, um, we will subtract 2 from both sides and we'll end up with negative B um, plus 2C equals, subtract 2, negative 5. So now that we have these two equations, um, we can go ahead, I'm, you can do this in um, many, many ways. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to solve this top equation for B and then plug my answer back into here. So this, I'm going to say B equals 2 minus C. I subtracted C from both sides and I end up with, with an answer for B. So now that I've found B, I'm going to go ahead and plug 2 minus C in for B down here. So I'm going to get negative, and um, remember to put that negative out front and then um, put a parenthesis because this negative number needs to apply to both 2 and C here. So 2 minus C gets plugged in for B, and then plus 2C equals negative 5. So now that we've done that, we can solve this equation for C, and then we'll end up being able to solve again for B. So I'm going to go ahead and write this. Um, we can just get rid of that. Um, I'm going to simplify this. So I'm going to end up with negative 2. Um, I have negative 2 here, and then minus a, a negative is plus C plus 2C equals negative 5. So I'll add um, 2 to the other side, and I'll have C plus 2C equals negative 3 when I add 2 to both sides. And then I add the C's together, I get 3C equals negative 3. And I divide both sides by 3 and get C equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and put that up there. We solve for C as negative 1. And now um, we can go ahead and plug C back into one of our um, original equations. Um, we've got C is negative 1. I always like to, when I get um, an answer for A, B, or C, I'd like to plug it back into one of the original equations. Sometimes I run into trouble if I've plugged it into an equation that I've like simplified from another one. So I always like to go back to one of the original ones that I wrote and plug it in. So let's use this first one here because it looks like it might be a little easier to do. So we've got 2 plus B, and then we said C was negative 1, so minus 1 equals 4. Um, so 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 plus B equals 4. We subtract 1 from both sides and we get B equals 3. Finally, so B is 3. So we have now solved for A, B, and C. And we can go ahead and erase all of this because what we're going to do is plug those three numbers back into this side of the original equation that, that we wrote and put that back into the integral. So we're going to have the integral of this with these numbers plugged back in. So we said that a was 2, so 2 over x. We said that b was 3, 
so plus 3 over x plus 2. And we said that c was negative 1, so we have minus 1 over x minus 1, and then dx, of course, is just notation that always goes with the integral here. So now, finally, this is something that we can actually take the integral of, as opposed to this, which was just impossible to, to take the integral of. Um, this we can treat as three separate terms. So first we're going to deal with 2 over x, then with 3 over x plus 2, then with 1 over x minus 1. So um, the formula we're going to use for this is, um, we can go ahead and erase this now. We cut off our 3 here. Um, the formula that we're going to use, and this is something that you should know um, as part of calculus, it's a super important formula. It comes up a lot, especially with partial fractions. The, the answer almost always ends up using this formula. It is uh, the integral of 1 over x equals natural log, or ln, of the absolute value of x. You almost always end up using this formula in partial fraction problems. So plug it into your calculator, write it on a formula sheet, even be better yet, memorize it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use this. So you can see um, we've got something here that's very similar to this form. Um, so the integral of 2 over x is actually, actually going to be ln of the absolute value of x, which makes sense, right, because we've got that x on the bottom. This moves up here. Um, and then because this is 2, 2 is multiplied out here in front instead of just 1. That 1 is actually implied right there. So we've got our 2 in front. So 2, natural log, uh, absolute value of x, plus, and then um, you can see this here is going to be 3 times ln of the absolute value of x plus 2. And then this, uh, don't forget minus sign here, we're going to have minus um, ln of the absolute value of x minus 1. And then um, always, whenever taking the integral, don't forget to add c to account for the constant. But that is actually going to be our final answer. 2 ln of the absolute value of x plus 3 ln of the absolute value of x plus 2 minus ln of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.